a memorable uh, quarterfinal. Ender McNulty coming forward. He's one of the uh, club players that uh, is involved with Bally Bowden. And it could be an interesting piece of information in terms of inside knowledge, the way the Dublin forwards operate. The first three seems to favour Armagh. And going to take it is Paul McGrain. Yes, and Ender McNulty has switched corners actually to go over and Mark Allen Brogan. And Dara Marsden is playing full forward, being marked by Paddy Christie. Ashin McConville chasing after this one. It's a hopeless case. Sideline ball for Paul Casey. Desi Farr. Nice chest high ball for Alan Brogan. Some jersey pulling. Free to Dublin. And the referee, precise and accurate. The three not taken from the correct position. He's going to give a throw ball now. Yeah, that's a correct decision, but again, I hate to see the referee getting too fussy too early in a game like this. As we watch the uh, throw in, Desi Farrell is playing centre forward, and John McNally seems to be switching in towards the full forward line as well. But uh, at the moment, as always with Dublin, positions mean very little. Desi Farrell fouling this time. Free to Armagh. Making a good run. Dermot Marsden got away from Barry Cowell rather easily. Now has to face Cowell. Fends himself and sends this off the post. And latching onto it is the captain, Coleman Goggins. Good ball. Out far is Darren McGee. Support is from the right half back, Paul Casey. Flicking it in towards the corner, Ray Cosgrove. Good play by Dublin. Are they going to score first in this semi-final? Seven Connell. Very good interplay here by Dublin. Ray Cosgrove was involved. Just a flick back to his right half forward. And Senan Connell, who's been scoring rather well recently, opens up this semi-final. A wonderful move in that time by Senan Connell to get into his scoring position. An interesting point also, Desi Farrell has gone out to centre-half forward to mark his club mate, Kieran McGinney. Kieran Wheeler going through the centre was Darren McGee. Just went through the hands of Justin McNulty. Back there is his younger brother, Ender McNulty. Paul McGray. Making himself available as Paddy McKeever. Being chased by Tyler Andrews. Being fouled by the left half back. Another free to Armagh. Joe Kernan with his fellow selectors. Paul Grimley and John McCluskey. Ball inside for his Ocean McConville. Ronan Clark was calling for it. Playing it along the touchline. That area was well guarded. And really, it needed a crossfield ball more than anything else. This is Barry Cow. Heather Andrews. Looking around for options. Going back to gather is Justin McNulty. Under pressure from Alan Brogan. Kieran McGinney switches the direction of the play. But is it going to carry too much pace? It is. Sideline ball, Dublin. Barry Cowell takes it very quickly. In for his Alan Brogan. Chance here for Dublin. And it's gone out for a 45. Kieran McGinney seemed to get a touch to it. So it's the first 45 of the afternoon. That's a very interesting decision, Martin, to put Desi Farrell on Kieran McGinney because they're the best of mates. Uh, obviously, so Farrell was involved in getting McGinney to transfer to Nafina. That's right, and by, by playing him on McGinney, he might in some way intimidate McGinney, might make, make Kieran McGinney feel under a little bit of a threat. And as well as that, Desi is the most experienced and has that little bit, bit of guy to exploit whatever weakness he knows that McGinney might have. Here's a man who's done it before from a 45. Paddy Christie. This one is floating to the left and wide. Scored a 45 against Donegal. 
He's actually got two points on the scoreboard, the fullback. He scored the other one from play in the match against Kildare. Seamus Mallon, one of the members of the audience. Breaking ball. Darren McGee leaving it for his older brother Johnny. Alan Brogan punching it forward. Ray Cosgrove. Three arm out players, but he survives the challenge. Chance for a point well taken. Some of his critics will say he's not, uh, he doesn't like the physical stuff. He survived the physical stuff there and did very well here. Look at this. Survived three challenges, had the confidence to send it over the bar. Good play. Certainly bottled plenty of strength that time, plenty of bravery, and a very good finish by a player who's really on top of his game this last couple of months. Shane Ryan picks up the loose ball, transfers it over to this side. A little push in the back, spotted by Michael Collins, the referee, free to Dublin. Ray Cosgrove to take it. Scorer of six goals in the last four games. A total tally of six goals and 17 points. It really is a remarkable performance. This one is going to the left. Plenty of Armagh defenders. Here McGinney underneath it. It survived a hefty challenge as well from John McNally. And the referee is going to have a word with McNally for that challenge on Kieran McGinney. And a yellow card is going to be shown for the first time. It looked like there was a clenched fist on the challenge on McGinney. First yellow card of this semi-final. Yeah, a little bit of an experience in John McNally's part. Went in with a clenched fist, definitely on McGinney. Good feeling by McGinney, but in there, that's certainly not playing the ball and probably deserves to be booked. To be fair, I don't think it was a clenched fist when I see the replay. I think he's just pulling and dragging. Yeah, that's fair comment, Matty. Darren McGee. Look at the support from Jesse Farrell. But McGee sends it over the bar. Scored a point against Donegal in the drawn match. Got his first start for the replay. Maintained his position. And this is how he rewarded Tommy Lyons. With a beautiful point, cutting through the centre. Jesse Farr was running so fast off the ball and off camera. But McGee, there's confidence. Good score. A very assured start by Dublin, Marty, it must be said. They're taking the game to our man. They've started it with three good scores on the scoreboard. Johnny McGee. Brings Sen and Connell into the action. Right half back is Paul Casey. Good ball into the space. Running onto it is John McNally. Available outside is Shane Ryan. Knocked away cleverly by Andrew McCann and picked up by his colleague in the half back line, Aidan O'Rourke. It's back to McCann. Dublin harassing and pressurizing. Wonderful play by Dublin. Forcing Armagh into the error. They maintain possession. Sen and Connell this time up to the long ball, but it was the wrong choice. So far, Martin, the quality of the ball that's going to Dublin is impressive, which is very much into the space. It's not the big, long, high ball. Yeah, that's the thing, Martin, that has been a characteristic of Dublin's performances all years, that they're hitting the, not the, the space and not the face as such into the area where the player is going into. And the other characteristic that has been a notable feature of their, of their game this year has been the pressure game yeah. that they're putting on, the, on their opposition whenever the opposition have the ball. <laughs> All over the country, clubs are being told, and intercounty players being told to make sure when a defender has the ball to put him under pressure, but very few do it. Well, it's the hard part and it's the piece that a lot of <laughs> fans don't notice. Lovely catch by Paul McGrain. Here McGinney again available to give the final distribution. This one, it's knocked away. Andrew McCann has to come back to gather. Looking for it is John Toe. Survives the challenge from Darren McGee. He gets the lucky break from Desi Farrell's breakdown and uh, 
Cole is fouled after he picked the ball, or indeed as he kicked the ball. So from where the ball landed, this is going to be a free for Armagh. Ten minutes played, still no score for Armagh. This is the first real opportunity for Armagh in this game. Paddy McKeever. The white flag has been raised by the umpire. Armagh are on their way. This man hasn't scored since the Ulster semi-final against Fermanagh. That was the 9th of June in Clonus. Seven points in five games. This will give him confidence, the fact that he was dropped for the replay against Sligo. Right down the middle, the kick out from Stephen Cluxton. Paul Casey comes from right half back. Just wouldn't come up first time. But John McNally, Armagh come away with it. Ender McNulty changes direction again. John Toll thought about the short ball, uses Dermot Marsden instead. Then comes the ball into the full forward line, and Stephen McDonald chasing him as Coleman Goggins. Gone through the centre is Roman Clark. That pathway is blocked. Now comes the fisted pass, the overlap. The pass is not good to Ocean McConville, pulls it out. And it's gone out for the 45. It was the first real movement from Armagh. Great running off the ball. We were critical of them in other games, Martin, but this is more of what we expect from Armagh. Yeah, great bit of interchange between Dermot Morrison, Oshin McConville and Stephen McDonald. That time a very, very good pass from Oshin. And maybe a little bit lucky to get the 45 out of yeah, it, to be honest about it. Yeah. But certainly Stephen McDonald is the one player that is on song this year with Armagh and they will be trying to channel as much ball into him as possible. He has been marked at the moment, I think, by Barry Cahill. Score of 31 points in six games. Oshin Makondo. Drops this one in, is there a touch? Oh, Cluxton reacts brilliantly. And the young goalkeeper comes out with the ball. He really knew very little about it, but we have to credit the keeper. It was a wonderful reaction save. Wonderful reaction save, sun in his eyes, but what a save. Paddy McKeever keeps the pressure on Dublin. Dermot Marsden needs the support of John McEntee. It's high, but it's to the left and wide. But that 45 by Ushin McConville just got a touch and Thuxton just saw it, reacted brilliantly, gathered it into his chest and came out. Fantastic goalkeeping instincts that time by Stephen Thuxton. Aiden abetted, I think, by Paddy Christie. Lots of breaking ball around centre field. John McEntee. Not a good delivery into his forwards. Dermot Marsden works hard. Dublin opened up here. Ushin McConville right into the middle of Hill 16. And Ushin will be disappointed. Really, there was an option there because Dermot Marsden was gone inside. And a little bit of anxiety. This is most unusual. We have several 2,000 Armagh supporters, I believe, in the middle of Hill 16. Wonderful to see, great sporting spectacle. John McEntee looking again for Stephen McDonough. Shooting. The ball is going straight over the bar. A fabulous point by Stephen McDonough. Second in terms of top scorers for Armagh with two goals and 14 points in six games. But this is a peach. From the reverse angle, camera, look at this, dropping over the crossbar, right out of the sideline. Yes, and he's going to give Coleman Goggins, who's marking him quite a handful at the moment. What is noticeable, Armagh beginning to pick up breaks, Marty. Shane Ryan, playing at left half forward for Dublin, despite wearing number 11. Tyler Andrews takes the right option, sends it across field, misjudged by Alan Brogan. 
picked up by Enda McNulty. Um, uh, our setting, as you said, Mark, Oshin McConville. Surviving the challenge from Young Brogan. Looking for the ball into space, but there was nobody really running. Coming across is Johnny McGee. Brings Paul Casey into the play. And then that final pass goes astray. And Armagh put the pressure again on Johnny McGee and his colleagues. Oshin McConville, Ronan Clark getting his first touch in this semi-final. Dermot Marsden is an option. This is Marsden. Gets by Barry Cowell. And this is going to the left and wide. That's a bad miss. Bad miss, that miss, and the miss a couple of minutes earlier by Oshin McConville to come back to haunt him. What is known as little Marty is that Keir McGeaney has driven forward in two or three occasions, something we didn't see him doing really against Sligo in the last game. And Taoiseach Bertie O'Hearn, along with the president of the GA, Sean McCaig, with his wife, as Johnny McGee has picked up an injury. Of course, he uh, strained a medial ligament against Mead over two months ago. And uh, because he played on, it seemed to do excessive damage. But uh, since returning, has certainly done very, very well at centre-half back. Yes, and a very imposing centre-half back he is indeed, Marty. Shows up the middle very, very well. Very difficult to get past, actually. Nice play again from Amar. John McIntyre hits it powerfully, hits it wide. That's a second bad miss from the centre half forward. Third, in fact, I think, from the uh, Cosmic Glen Club. And yes. he's, he's kind of shooting wildly, isn't he, Mark? Yes, and they're after again panicking a little bit there. The kick out from Stephen Cluxon did not go over the 20 metre line, so it will be throw up in front of the goals at the 20 metre line. Correct decision by the referee. Again, technically correct. It's a technical uh, foul, and the referee has done the, the right thing. Here on Whelan, number eight. Paul McGrain, number nine. McGrain down to John McEntee. Will he try again? Ups for a colleague. Ronan Clark. Fouled by Coleman Goggins. Dublin supporter certainly incensed with the decision by the Corkman. Three going to be taken by Ushin McConville. This to level the match for the first time. 21 of his 31 points scored from freeze. Armagh and Dublin are level. After almost 18 minutes of play. Yes, and at the moment, certainly, Armagh begins to dominate the centre of the field area. That midfield diamond of McIntyre, Toll, McGrain and McGeevy are starting to turn the screw a little bit, and they're winning all the breaking balls at the moment. Some substitutes warming up. That's uh, Barry Duffy and Jared Reid. Jared Reid is a defender, Barry Duffy a forward. Brogan getting away from Kieran McGinney and then to McNulty. Left half back for Dublin is Father Andrews. This time it's a free for Dublin. Andrew McCann fouling. Yeah, and again, I think a harsh enough decision. Alan Brogan was running out of options that time, and McCann okay, but a hand across him. But again, it gives Ray Cosgrove a chance to re-establish their lead. That's his angle. As Ray Cosgrove steadies himself. As we look from our camera angle behind the goals, and it's sailing over the crossbar. Second point of the day for the full forward. Benny Tierney playing in his 102nd championship match, 22nd championship match this afternoon. 
Breaking ball. Picked up by Darren McGee. Going for his second point, but this one tailing to the left. Third wide of the day so far for Dublin. I think maybe at times, Marty, around the middle of the park, there's an absence of composure on the part of the Dublin team. The runs were even made that time by the full forward line. Perhaps it would have been more advantageous just to drop the ball in short in front of them. Good kick out by Benny Tierney. Paul McGrain made the run from a central midfield position out to the left right flank as we look at it. Once again, Armagh pick up the loose breaking ball. Ronan Clark, Paddy Christie. But it's Clark that gets the pass from John McIntyre. Good run by Clark. And he sends it over the bar. Ronan Clark seemed to get injured as he kicked that over the bar for his first point in this semi-final. He was the hero in the replay against Sligo with a goal and two points. This is his first point in the All-Ireland semi-final. And a very good score. Yes, again, interesting enough today, they're playing him in, in the full forward line. I think he's a much bigger threat to our man when he's in there rather than out in the wing position, which he seemed to play him in the first Sligo match. Four of the Armagh forwards have now scored. Only two absentees, John McEntee and Dermot Marston. Darren McGee down injured in the center of the pitch as the sideline ball is taken quickly. That injury to McGee not spotted yet. John McEntee changing the distribution tactic this time, sending it in low to Marsden. Under pressure from Kyle and Johnny McGee. And it's Barry Kyle that comes away with it. Referee, I think, has blown his whistle. And in quick to assert his authority. And John McEntee having a word with Michael Collins. And I think he's noting McEntee's name in the book. He didn't show him a yellow card, but he just noted his number. And that was for some dissent. Darren McGee, Darren McGee, see, you can see there, clutching his face, just seemed to be an accidental knock. Easily cut out. Sent back in by John Toe. Stephen McDonald with Coleman Goggins, gold side. Onto the left boot. Difficult enough angle. It's floating to the left and wide. The umpire indicated quite clearly that it is it up, but no, neither team seems to be able to impose themselves decisively on the other as yet a lot of scrappy play at centre field while they're breaking the ball it isn't a, a decisive plan to pick up the loose ball Sending Connor feeding Ray Cosgo coming into challenge now into McNulty Gone inside is Darren McGee, back to Cosgrove, lovely touch, back to McNally, Cosgrove, and he takes the point. His third point of this All-Ireland semi-final, his second from play. What a beautiful sequence of play and understanding and interplay. Darren McGee, Cosgrove and McNally, all of it, look at that for a flick on. McNally had to go back to Cosgrove and he wisely took the right option, sending it over the bar. Yeah, Cosgrove was involved two or three occasions in that move. Great presence of mind to flick the ball on and take the return. And again, the composure to put the ball over the bar. That guy is really on fire about giving the display we'd have expected from them. McGinney this time. Good call by Ronan Clark. He indicated that he wanted over towards the Cusick stand side, but Paddy Christie was quick and alert to see what was going on. Pater Andrews makes himself available. And not a great ball for Desi Farrell. And that's going to be a line ball to Armagh. Only defender from the Armagh camp to actually score in this championship with one point. The referee does not blow his whistle. Dermot Marsden and Armagh were looking for a free. On this side, Darren McGee just taking his eye off it. 
nice pick up that almost came off for Ray Cosgrove. It looked as if it was going to work. And McGee now has a chance to make amends. Ball given away. Francie Bellew to Ender McNulty. Crossfield ball that, well, it wasn't a good idea. Running on is Jonathan McGee, better known as Johnny McGee. In towards the corner, John McNally. Looking for options. Decides to take on Justin McNulty. This is a great run by McNally. And McNally sends it up. Of the two forward lines to go and make a decisive breakout. Kieran McGinney seemed to lose it in the sun. Paul McGrain fouled Desi Farrell in his race for possession. Ray Cosgrove again. When the ball is left into him, he is causing problems for Armagh. There is a fear up north that they have, a, well, not a very strong full back line. And certainly Ray Cosgrove seems to have the better every time the ball comes in in the proper way. Yeah, he's giving an object lesson and actually breaking off his man, showing for the ball and winning possession. Three points for Ray Cosgrove so far. Going for his fourth. To put Dublin two points in front. That's what it looks like from the canal end. And 16 happy so far. Their hero in the championship to date. Producing a rather consistent performance at full forward. Dublin lead by two points. Good play by Kieran McGinney. Laying it off to Paul McGrain, who brings Ronan Clark into the game. Well read. Good reading by Barry Cal, but the breaking ball favours Oshin McConville. And that is gone to the right. Perspiration than inspiration. Nice one, Martin. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> John Toll. Laying it off, and it's robbed beautifully. And away come Dublin. Chance here. And that is gone to left and right. The referee, in fact, has blown his whistle. And giving a free to Dublin. Here. Easily won again by Ray Cosgrove. This time onto the left boot. But it's going to go, I would imagine, yes it is, left from the sideline. Paul Casey comes from the right half-back position. Fancy Bellew underneath it. And on this occasion it was fouled. Free quickly taken. John Toll. Paddy McKeever with Pat Andrews. It's still there for the taking. Desi Farr. Arrives just a little bit too late. But Dublin have possession. Coleman Goggins being fouled. Free to double. Kieran Wheeler. John McNally came this side, but uses Shane Ryan instead. Alan Brogan is outside him. Shane Ryan correctly penalised for taking too many steps. Free to Armagh. Ronan Clark. Look where the full forward is. Right here in front of us in the centre of the field, Hogan stands side. Kieran McGinney, that's a good ball. Stephen McDonald loses it. And Dublin regained possession. Paddy Christie. Desi Farr. Kieran McGinney is supposed to be marking him. Again, good ball inside for Ray Cosgrove. Fancy Bellew is marking the full forward now. Cosgrove stepping aside, one, two challenges. But it easily intercepted. And Armagh come away once more. Interesting tactical switch by Joe Kernan and Armagh to put Francie Bellew now on Ray Cosgrove. As we watch Ronan Clark, Armagh playing essentially with one man full forward, Stephen McDonald. Battling with Coleman Goggins, and the defender did very well, but the referee claims that he picked the ball off the ground. There you can see the hand signal. Just one point so far in this first half. Hits it. 
Sweetly over the bar. Two points from McConville, both from Freeze. And Armagh still trailing by just one point. And that's Armagh's first point in 15 minutes. Yes, that's correct, Marty. But you must credit both teams for the effort, even though they're finding it very difficult to establish any great rhythm. And the quality of the passing at times, I must say, is less than what we expected from a game of this importance. Fine catch. Darren McGee. Great ball into space. Ray Cosgrove comes out together. Not a good ball for Alan Brogan. And the Tigerish Ender McNulty got there first. Another free for Armagh. Great two minutes extra time to be played here in this first half. Johnny McGee under pressure from John McEntee. It's going to be a free to Dublin. Well, Dublin certainly will fancy playing into the Hill 16 end in the second half. It's where Ray Cosgrove has done quite a lot of his goal scoring. And Armagh once again the attack broken down. Paul Casey. Ender McNulty. Kieran McGinney, as always, showing for it. Getting more involved. This time, lobs it in high. Broken down for Roman Clark. Paddy Christie for once makes a mistake. And remember that ball was dropping in. And he puts it over the bar. Armagh and Dublin are level for the third time. Three frees, three points for Ushin McConville. And the referee, Michael Collins, blows the halftime whistle. Second half on. Just one change, as Michael was informing you. Colin Moore on for Shane Ryan. Dublin playing in towards Hill 16, going for an early score. And that is gone to the left and wide. Alan Brogan, the guilty party. <laughs> Denny Tierney facing the sunshine now in this second period. Loose ball again. Francie Bellio under pressure from Darren McGee. Fouled by the Kilmacud Crooks man. Heather Andrews. Colliding with Aidan O'Rourke. And another sideline ball for Armagh. John Toll and Aidan O'Rourke combining. Darren McGee challenging with Kieran Wheeler. Much to the annoyance of the Dublin supporters, this is a free for Armagh. Making the run is Stephen McDonald. Outside him is John McEntee. Good ball. Over for his Jim Marsden. Barry Cowell is the Dublin right corner back. Paddy McKeever. Coming over to mark him is Johnny McGee. Still McKeever. Needs the support outside. There available is Paul McGrain. Stephen McDonald. The type of ball he usually loves. Stephen Cluxton. Good save. And comes off his line so quickly. The young goalkeeper from the Parnells Club here in Dublin. So after that uneasy period, Dublin come forward. This is Colin Moore. Knocked away from Sen and Connell. Again, they feed Stephen McDonald. Again, he goes for the score. And that is going over the bar. 
Two of the finest points we've seen in Grove Park in the championship of 2002 has been scored by Stephen McDonald. And for the very first time in this All-Ireland football semi-final, Armagh are in front. This was a fabulous score. He did it in the first half. He's done it in the second. Yes, and he's been a persistent irritant to the Dublin defence from the beginning of the game. A wonderful score from a very difficult angle. Fine catch. Losing possession. Darren McGee. Comes instead to John Toll. Stephen McDonnell accelerates. Back outside for his Oshie McConville. Floating this one in. Again, Cluxton, sound. And that is not a good pass to Johnny McGee, but he gets away with it. And it's the centre half back that comes forward. Ray Cosgrove. Oh, lovely. Beautiful to watch. Going through. Sennon Connell. And he sends it over the bar. It's his second point in this semi-final. He started the first half with a point, and he started the second. This was a great run by O'Connell, but certainly the score was created by Ray Cosgrove. They're two wonderful appetizers for the second half. That score by McDonald, followed by that one there. Superb score from Connell. Sides level yet again for the fourth time, in fact. Fine catch, Paul McGray. The players are on centre field, concentrating now on catching the ball. Stephen McDonald lays it off for Ronan Clark. And Cluxton under pressure from Dermot Marsden. And the goalkeeper didn't like the challenge by the corner forward. But the referee had blown his whistle, and he's giving a free to the goalkeeper. I'll say over the last couple of uh, games that I've seen him, I'm very impressed with Stephen Cluxton. He's very assured under the ball, but a wonderful distributor, I must say. Armagh playing with a lot more fire in their bellies now at the start of the second half. Paul McGray again using Stephen McDonald. Has players available behind and in front of him. Goes for John Toll. There's a chance here for Armagh. Chance for Paddy McKeever. The referee has blown his whistle, and I think he's giving the free, I've given the goal. Paddy McKeever. A man who hadn't scored, as I mentioned in the first half, since the Ulster semi-final, until he scored a free in the first half. But he left onto the breaking ball here, stepped aside the challenge, and managed somehow to scramble it into the net. Just about got the touch on to it that time. Great flick down, just about touch it over the line. His momentum seemed to carry him right into the end line and just got the slightest bit of touches. Some Dublin people might uh, protest at the number of steps. But Alan Broga, can Dublin respond? Look at Kieran Whelan, chance of a goal. Oh, what a shot! Forget the first half. This is the second half. A most memorable start. A goal from Paddy McKeever. Within 60 seconds, Kieran Whelan had come through from the centre field area and rifled a bullet past Benny Tierney. A blistering shot that time with his left foot. What a response, and Fadigan fully deserved. At last, the handcuffs are off, Marty. Now we have a match in Crow Park. Now we have a game of football. Andrew McCann, gathered superbly by Paddy Christie. Outside him is Paul Casey. Down for Sin and Connell. This game has exploded into life at the start of this second period. Good running off the ball into the space. John McNally. Justin McNulty left for dead. McNally coming along the end line. Gives it back outside. Chance of another point for Dublin. And another score. Alan Brogan gets his first point in this All-Ireland semi-final. Wonderful interplay here. McNally creating the space and Brogan finishing superbly. Well, certainly whatever was said to both teams at halftime, they've come out with a very, very positive at, uh, attitude to the second half. Some great scores to set it off. 
A Hill 16, a very special place, particularly if you're from Dublin. Dublin in front yet again. Armagh in front only once. It was just a fleeting moment. Desi Farrell saw the challenge coming in from Frenzy Bellew. Sideline ball Dublin. Into Ray Cosgrove. Just took his eye off it slightly. And Armagh come away with it. John Toll. Good crossfield ball. Here come Armagh now. Dermot Marsden makes a run. Holding on to the possession is McEntee. McEntee turns and sends it over the bar. He's had several attempts in the first half, but finally he gets his name on the scoreboard. Yes, he was patient that time, just held the ball up even the run was made from and a lovely score from John McEntee. Playing very well. Here come Dublin again. Up first, John McNally. Picked up, however. Kieran McGinney comes away with it. Sending it straight down the middle. Should be Paul Casey's. Oshin McConville did well, despite being outnumbered. Willing to carry, willing to pass it to Paddy McKeever. With him is Pato Andrews. Playing it along the touchline. Stephen McDonald makes a run from right corner forward into a left corner forward position. Dermot Marsden did so well to keep it in play. Now comes the cross. Over this side is Aidan O'Rourke. Colin Moore fouling, according to the referee. And this is going to be a free for Armagh for a foul on Aidan O'Rourke. So Darren Holman is going to be introduced for Dublin and Kieran Hughes is coming on for Andrew McCann at left half back. So Kieran Hughes goes in at left half back from the Pierce Old Club in Armagh City and Darren Holman is on for Darren McGee. Paddy McKeever not really getting behind this one to his satisfaction. Still could work out. Great block down by Johnny McGee. Break favours Ronan Clark. Armagh hold possession. John McIntyre floats this to the right and wide. Stephen Cluxton. Kick out. This confirmation of the Armagh substitution. Kieran Hughes on it. Left half back for Andrew McCann. And we'll give it the other one in just a moment as Armagh go into the attack. This is Kieran McGinney. Desi Farrell chasing him as her normal. Coming through the centre, Paul McGray. Good defending Dublin. And they come away with it. In the shape and form of Coleman Goggins. Sending Connell, changing wings, giving it first Alan Brogan, who's moving out around the 45. Still Brogan. Good balance, good composure. And then takes off, accelerates. Four Armagh players behind the ball. Uses Sending Connell, gives it in. There's a chance here for Colin Moore, and that's over the bar. Well, for Colin Moore, this point will be a welcome one. He puts Dublin in front, hasn't scored against Kildare, or indeed the draw, the replay against Donegal. So this was a vital score for his confidence and indeed a crucial one for his county. Yeah, but a very bit of mature play from a young man, Alan Brogan, setting it up. Johnny McGee uses Kieran Whelan. Scored four points in the quarter-final replay against Donegal, but what about that goal? He scored from this angle against Donegal, and he's done it again against Armagh. Anybody who doubted Kieran Whelan's ability as a footballer for the big occasion has certainly got the answer here. Great goal, great point. Yes, there seemed to be more of a shared responsibility right through the field this time in the second half. It was been left to one or two in the first half, but this time all of the Dublin team, as well as all of the Armagh team, are responding very well. Breaking ball picked up by Aidan O'Rourke. 
Nice interplay between Roland Clark and Paddy McKeever. Chance for McKeever. The white flag will be raised. This is a man that was dropped for the Sligo replay. He really was obviously focused for this match. He wanted to prove a point, and he's now scored a goal and two points in this semi-final. Again, beautiful score off his left foot. Stole the dummy to Pader Andrews and slotted it over the bar. Great response once again. One point between the teams. Here in Wheeler. And could well be in trouble here with the referee. Didn't like the challenge, and uh, Michael Collins had blown his whistle, and he's noting the name of Kieran Whelan, and a yellow card, I'm pretty sure, is going to be shown here. Second yellow card for Dublin, the other player being John McNally, Kieran Whelan getting a yellow. It means now that Dublin have amassed 14 yellow cards in the championship campaign so far. Interestingly, Armagh have 21 yellow cards. Good ball in for Stephen McDonald. Had the time, had the space. But he'd be very of a speedy recovery. He seemed to pick up that injury, if you recall, in the first half, but obviously they felt he couldn't continue on. Some pushing, and Armagh go back into the attack. I must say, Marty, I'm very impressed with the midfield pairing of Armagh, both Toll and McGrain. They're probing away consistently, winning a lot of ball, and actually distributing better quality ball into their forward line than Dublin might be. Kieran McGinney. Again, McDonald makes a run from one corner to the other. Oshin McConville. Look at this. This is a chance for Armagh, surely. It's sent over the bar. A point for John McEntee. But that needed a cool head and a little bit more composure. That and was a goal-scoring opportunity. And a little bit of peripheral vision, Marty. That time, Ronan Clark was wide open. Great pass in, McEntee making the rope. But if he just looked up, directly a square to him was Ronan Clark. The goal was on. Armagh beginning to dominate around midfield, despite that wonderful surge by Dublin and response. John McEntee. Going for a point, dropping it in. Stephen Cluxton. Watching it all the way. Here's Paddy Christie. Has to go back to his keeper. Barry Cahill and Coleman Goggins waiting for possession. Paul Casey, right half back. Switching over to the left half back position. Senan Connell. Tommy Lyon seems to fall into uh, trouble here as well. <laughs> With Kieran Hughes. And I think that Kieran Hughes is going to be spoken to and possibly booked by the referee. Yes, he is. The yellow card for Kieran Hughes, who came on for Andrew McCann. Two yellows for Dublin, one yellow for Armagh. It's a poor kick. Gave Desi Farr no chance whatsoever. Sideline ball Armagh. Yeah, but to be fair to Kieran Whelan also, the runs weren't being made by the forward line that time to give him an option. These two teams level seven times in this All-Ireland semi-final. At the moment, you would have to say Armagh, in terms of possession, dominate. John McEntee. Wins the ball back, thanks to the hard work of Dermot Marsden. Ronan Clark, nice skill, good composure. Uses Paul McGray. Aidan O'Rourke has a lash, but it's gone wide. The ninth wide of the game for Armagh. Yes, the build-up might have been a bit laboured that time, Marty, but McEntee doing very, very well. Just watch this again. Here in Hughes coming in and Tommy Lines taking a tumble and sportingly picking up the Armagh player. <laughs> Stephen Cluxton with the kick out. Pader Andrews gets by Paddy McKeever. But great pressure by Armagh. Oshin McConville. Referee giving him the free. 
and he had to take a lot of pressure to win it. Gives the ball in quick. It's two against two. Stephen McDonald tries to knock it down for Marsden. Paddy Christie is back there. And he is followed by Dermot Marsden. Free to Paddy and to Dublin. So Dublin have to start again. Terrible distribution. They seem to have lost their shape and their concentration at the moment. Despite that brilliant goal by Kieran Whelan. It should have been a signal for Dublin to dominate. It's been the trigger for Armagh to dominate, surprisingly. John McEntee loses out to Johnny McGee. Making himself available is Colin Moore. Flicking it inside for Alan Brogan. Challenging Colin Moore after he gave the ball inside from Aidan O'Rourke. Meanwhile, it's Alan Brogan. Trying it from a difficult angle and sending it over the bar. No doubt about it, Alan Brogan, a star of the future, has really matured since he made his debut for Dublin against Wexford on June the 1st. Puts Dublin in front as Aidan O'Rourke has received a yellow card. So it's uh, two all in terms of yellow cards for these counties. Yes, that was a wonderful individual scored by Alan Brogan. Very little on, came on to his left foot and again shot it over the bar. Certainly he's proved greatly in the second half. A little bit of pushing there by Darren Holman, spotted by the referee. No doubt here that the referee is perfectly correct. Kieran McGinney survives the challenge of John McNally, pumping it in long, perhaps too long. Paddy Christie, wisely, laying it uh, off over the end, leaving it off over the end line and wide. Taoiseach Bertie Ahern with his daughter Georgina as Jason Sherlock warms up. Perhaps his introduction will invigorate this Dublin attack. Desi Farrell noticeably as I look at that Dublin attack now at full forward. Fine catch by Kieran Wheeler. Making the run at the far side is Senan Connell. Uses instead Ray Cosgrove. And Armagh have it once more. John McEntee trying a crossfield ball. Didn't work out at all. Paul Casey intercepts. Johnny McGee, Stephen McDonald. Claire that's providing the pressure. This is Darren Homer. Good pressure again. Only this time from John Toll. Leaving it in long. Goes by. Here McGinney with good covering again. Justin McNulty. Needs the support of his goalkeeper, Benny Tierney. Under pressure from Colin Moore. McNulty again. Great pressure this time from Desi Farr. Aidan O'Rourke now has possession. And eventually O'Rourke wins the free. Right down the sideline. Ball gone out over the line. Under McNulty. The referee claims that it is in fact a free to Armagh. And Dublin and Tommy Lyons incensed with the decision. And a yellow card, I would imagine, for Father Andrews. I thought a little bit harsh to give him a yellow card that time. I think Tommy Lyons thought it should have been a line ball for uh, Dublin. I'd be inclined to agree with that. Sideline ball, Armagh. As Tommy Lyons tries to help out his defence in the sideline, encouraging. And Oshin McConville. Coming through the centre, there's a chance here. Left half back, Kieran Hughes, and a great block down. Good defending Dublin. Out fires Alan Brogan. Dublin now, can they counter attack? Roy Cosgrove makes a run, holds possession. Uses Desi Farrell instead. Beats Francie Bellew and Justin McNulty. Still far, orchestrating affairs from full forward. Colin Moore, crossfield ball now required. Here it is. Over fires Roy Cosgrove. Cosgrove sends it over the bar. Five points for Ray Cosgrove. Three from play, two from freeze. And Dublin lead by two points. Good ball over here, fires 
Ray Cosgrove, and he is so dangerous every time he touches the ball. Yes, and credit the Dublin attack, so patient that time too, Marty, and waiting for the opportunity to arise, and again, a glorious finish by Cosgrove. Ben and Tierney again, just picks out that ball down the middle. John Toll makes himself available. These two players, Toll and McGrain, doing very well at centre field for Armagh. Good catch by Ronan Clark, under pressure. Gives it to Stephen McDonald, Pater Andrews. And that's going to be a free end. Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment, Marty, on the strategy that Armagh are using at the moment. When they get the ball on the right wing, they pump it high all the way across the field to the opposite side in the hope of isolating a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's working very well. So Philip Lochran from Clady. Played centre field for University Ulster, Jordanstown. Still an Armagh under-21 star. Has been in fact for the last two years. And he replaced John McEntee in the Sligo replay after 64 minutes. He comes in now for John Toll. Ushin McConvo with the free and the point. Four from four. Quite an impressive statistic for Ushin McConvo. Dublin lead by just one point. Twenty-year-old Stephen Cluxton with the kick out. Breaking ball picked up again by Dublin by Johnny McGee chasing after him Paul McGray. Good running through the centre. Good defending by Kieran McGinney. Tries to knock it back, and Benny Tierney will leave it right over the end line. Good decision by Benny Tierney to use Philip Lockwood. Going to be a throw ball here between Darren Holman, I would imagine, and John McEntee. They were the players involved in that particular sequence. Paul McGrain, number nine. Pushing on Darren Holman's back. Free to Dublin. Giving it long. It's two against two here. Look for Ray. Cosgrove has sneaked in. Chance of a point. Oh, beautiful. The top forward in the championship, not just today, but right throughout since the championship campaign began from Dublin last May, below at Dr. Cullen Park, Ray Cosgrove has been lethal. A lovely bit of opportunism and anticipation that time, waiting for the ball to bounce over it by his head, and again scored a beauty. John McNally is the player that's making way, and Jason Sherlock is introduced. Being introduced in every game so far. Scored two points against Wexford, but has failed to score since. But Jason Sherlock adds another dimension to this Dublin attack. Not just a finisher now, but a creator. Kieran Hughes sending that ball over far as Dermot Marsden. Sideline ball, Dublin. Yes, indeed, there's an interestingness about Jason Sherlock and it, uh, 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 the way he can run around and drag defenders all over the place. Alan Brogan now playing at in the half-forward line. Dublin playing with Ray Cosgrove and Desi Fowle in the two-man full-forward line. Stephen McDonald, as always, keeping him company is Coleman Goggins. Aidan O'Rourke back outside. Good defending, great block down. The coach is Roland Clark. Will he score? It's going, and it's over the bar. You'd never think he was just 19 years of age. Played for the Armagh Miners last year. And Joe Kernan, again, while the Armagh crowd are celebrating, making another switch. But uh, certainly 19-year-old Ronan Clark, hero in the replay against Sligo, does the business here. Good score. Well taken. 
There's a great credit to them. Uh, they're stubborn, they're unflinching, and they're applying concentrated aggression onto the Dublin defence at the moment. But it must be said that both sets of players out around the middle are beginning to tire a little bit, Marty. And this is the point that some people make about Armagh, that they seem to tire in the last 10 or 15 minutes. This is going to test them. It's going to test them, but it's in contrast to other games they're scoring in the last quarter. Breaking ball. Once again, comes to Darren Homer. Wanting to prove a point to his manager. Here he goes. It's a poor shot. And Benny Tierney has all the time in the world to gather that one. Down for his eight in a row. Needs the support from Kieran McGinney. It's there, as always. And McGinney involved with Jason Sherlock. They're clubmates. Back down for his Paul McGray. Good ball for Stephen McDonald. Ronan Clark is inside. And outside is John McEntee. Can he float this one over? The answer is a most definite yes. Three points for John McEntee. Eight times Armagh and Dublin are level. Came into this match scoring two goals and five points in six games. Three points in this match. He could have a few more, but I don't think any of his critics would say anything about it because he has always responded when our man needed him. He's been wonderful today, both as a creator and as a scorer in that case. To my mind, to my mind the man of the match. Darren Homer laying it outside. Here's Alan Brogan in space. Can he put this one over? He can't. Five minutes left in Croke Park. Will we have an answer about who will play Kerry on the 22nd of September? Well, certainly I wouldn't like to be putting money on it, Marty. Very finely balanced. Eight times they've been level. Is it possible that this will go to a replay? Kieran McGinney laying it outside. Philip Lockwood. Back to Kieran McGinney. Several options. None of them in the full forward line at the moment. They're all over on the half forward line. This is Oshin McConville, confronted by Paul Casey. McConville, great run, uses the fist and sends it over the bar. His first from play. Arma in front. Oshin McConville provides the finishing touch, despite Paul Casey's best efforts, came along the touchline and uses his fist to score. And what was significant is McGinney drove forward that time, and again this tactic of driving a high ball across the field, getting McConville on the end of it, who took on the responsibility and fitted a lovely point. Barry O'Hagan introduced for Dermot Marsden. Marsden, the only Armagh forward not to score. The kick out by Stephen Cluxton. Almost 80,000 people cannot take their eyes off this ball, but Desi Farrell did and gives possession away to Armagh. Barry O'Hagan, scorer two points in the replay against Sligo and then dropped for this match. Fine catch by Stephen McDonald. Here's Oshin again, and a brilliant block down by Paul Casey. 45 for... And Ulster finally breached that seven-year gap. Tyrone, the last side from the province to be in a final. Dublin under pressure. It's Barry Cowell. Chased by Ronan Clark. Referee blows the whistle for a foul on Cowell. The Armagh supporters not too pleased, but Tommy Lyons, I'm sure, will be relieved. One point, two minutes. Johnny McGee. Gives it long. Cutting across is Kieran McGinney. Under pressure. Free to Dublin. Jason Sherlock in the thick of the action. Two extra minutes to be played. Alan Brogan. Stopped by Aidan O'Rourke. Desi Farrell is outside. So too is Colin Moore. And that's for actual playing time. 
Two minutes extra time to be played. Can you bear to watch? Is this the end of Tommy Lines' babes? Can they get an equaliser? They have a free, quickly taken, but given away by Jason Sherlock. Into McNulty. Giving it long, down for Stephen McDonald, chased by Coleman Goggins. Stephen, with possession, quite happy to hold it until somebody arrives. John McEntee, back to McDonald. Hitting this very high, hitting this to the left and wide. 11 wide to Armagh. 69 minutes, 55 seconds. Just two minutes left. Is it Armagh against Kerry on the 22nd of September? Darren Holman fouled, free to Dublin. Referee won't allow the free to be taken quickly. Not taken from the right position, and it's going to be Darren Holman. Armagh introducing or coming on for Armagh. Declan Darcy, I believe, is coming on for Colin Moore. Changes in both caps. Referee again wants the substitution to take place and will not allow the free to be taken quickly. Paddy McKeever is going to make way for Carl O'Rourke. And certainly McKeever has done the business this afternoon for Armagh. Carl O'Rourke, the experienced O'Rourke, coming on. Kieran Wheeler. Giving it long. Kieran McGinney anticipates and reads the situation well. Is the dream final about to be interrupted by the men from Armagh, led by this man, Joe Kernan, who brought his club to this venue and won three All-Ireland club titles? It, it certainly looks like it, Marty, at the moment. Aidan O'Rourke to Kieran McGinney. 20 seconds left. Jason Sherlock making way. Ray Cosgrove, can he get room to shoot? Everybody standing on their feet. Cosgrove is fouled by Ender McNulty, and this is a free for Dublin. That's a really brave piece of play by Cosgrove, demanded the ball, got it, held on to it, and drew the foul. But can he score from this free? The most important kick of the whole championship. He scored six points. They can't watch. We have to. All of Dublin has to. Does this go to a replay? Hill 16 he faces. It's floating to the right. Will it curl off the post? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Francie Bellio comes away. Armagh have to hold possession. It's all over. What a dramatic finish. Armagh, having lost to me, than to Kerry, have finally done it. They have finally won a match in Croke Park. They are in the All-Ireland Final in today, three weeks, against the men of Kerry. Tommy Lyons congratulates Joe Kern. And Joe Kernan cannot believe that today is finally their day. Paddy McKeever, a goal at two points, dropped for the quarter-final replay against Sligo, comes on and scores a goal at two points. For Stephen Cluxton, there is the joy of winning a Leinster Under-21 and Senior Championship medal, but heartbreak because he will not be playing in this year's All-Ireland Football Final.